is my know by year. If you're new to my channel, I wanna thank you for joining me and for showing me your support. This is a very uncomfortable thing for me to do. I have challenged myself in 2019 to undertake something called a no buy year. And I will link up in the cards a short video where I talk about some of that decision-making process as well as the rules for my no buy. Um, and I won't bore you with any of that talk now. The purpose for this video is, and if you are not interested in beauty content, I will not be offended if you check out now on my channel. I also plan to do some culinary arts related videos as well as some fine art related videos beginning probably the spring break in two weeks. Uh, the purpose of this video is to do a, a two-day foundation wear test and it is inspired in large part by other YouTubers who I will link below. Um, I love when YouTubers do half-face comparisons of products, whether that's looking for a dupe for a foundation or an eye look, and that's really where this video is coming from. This little sample packet is for La Mer Longwear Fluid Foundation, it has an SPF of 20, and it retails for $120 an ounce. I have a sample size, which I've already done one wear test on, which I will link up in the cards if you're interested in seeing this as a standalone. But truly that experience made me want to throw have a throwdown between it and my Estee Lauder double wear. Now, terrible decision. She did a dupe video, which I will link below, where she threw the La Mer down against a physician formula. Please go over, check that, her video out. I really enjoyed how she set up her comparison. On day one, she had one foundation on one side of her face and the other on the other. For day two, she swapped that layout. And the reason that's especially interesting to me is our skin ages at different rates our skin has different flares, different issues, and oftentimes if you're going to have an issue with your foundation, it's because of perhaps a dry patch on one side of your face. To be able to truly get a comparison foundation review, I think it's a true stroke of genius inspiration to have that idea to swap on day two. So that's what I will do today. This is my La Mer Liquid Foundation. I had one sample size in the shade 12, which on my winter skin reads a little too pigmented, a little too peachy. It does look like I have plenty of product left in my from my sample packet to do that two day wear test. Now today I will put the La Mer on the left side of my face and the Estee Lauder on the right. And I will begin with the La Mer. The only thing on my skin right now, I washed my face this morning, moisturized, put a basic serum on, and sunscreen. I have a different damp beauty blender to use on each side of my face. This is the foundation that I feel smells like a good port wine, which makes it absolutely mesmerizing to me. So in terms of my no buy year, I need to guard against that. What I'm really hoping to achieve here is to see whether the Lauder can serve as a dupe for the characteristics that I enjoy in the La Mer, saving me obscene amounts of money in 2020, because this is one of the foundations that I would likely add to my collection. 
I'm just going in with slightly more to build up the coverage where I have hyperpigmentation, a little bit of discoloration, etc. I also was very impressed by the La Mer on that sample size wear test by how well it held up on the bridge of my nose. I do wear glasses and it would just be a handy thing to have a truly long wear foundation as part of my arsenal. Now I will not be purchasing this in 2019 so any of my observations are likely to be a moot point what I hope is at the end of this year I hope to rewire my brain and my relationship with what I feel is a reasonable expenditure on something like foundation. The La Mer is, I feel, offering good coverage. I might go in a little bit more on my chin, which still is showing some redness. I find it difficult to apply foundation to just half my face. I'm used to going all over and I sort of need to concentrate on keeping it to one side. Now the Estee Lauder Double Wear may read as a significantly different lighter color on my skin. I don't know, but I don't have any plans today. So I don't mind the idea of having slightly different foundations on both si each side of my face. This one I'm just going to dip into and pounce on. Now, along my nose, it will be difficult to keep the two sides separate. But I will do my best. Now, the damp sponge is shearing out the both of the foundations, and I actually prefer that. I generally prefer a light to medium coverage foundation, not a full coverage. And both of these foundations have a reputation of being on the full coverage side. I'm going to keep the rest of my makeup very minimal today so that you can, so that I can really judge the foundation itself and not the powders and whatnot that I have on top. I'm going back in with the La Mer just a bit on my chin where I feel the coverage was too sheer. The good news is I don't see a discernible line down the center of my face where those two colors are directly adjacent to each other. I'll return when I have the rest of my makeup on, talk about that very briefly, but truly I want to keep this a very simple foundation only test and tomorrow I will reverse those two foundations. The rest of my makeup has been applied. I do want to quickly run through that. I set my whole face um, mostly on the side planes with my clay to post setting powder. I went in with my Bobbi Brown Illuminated Bronzing Powder in the shade Aruba number no. four. And I've fallen back in love with it over the past two weeks or so as the weather has warmed up. I love the sun kiss it gives my skin. And I don't know if you can tell, but this one perhaps I will hit pan on soon. Blush, I went in with a blush that's been in my collection since 2017. Laura Geller Baked Blush in Pink Buttercream. And again, love it in the spring, summer. It is fairly pigmented, but if you go in with a one dab with a natural hair brush, 
I feel you can get a very natural sheer flush to the to the cheeks. On my eyes, I just have bronzer in my all over the lid and in my crease. And on the outer corner, I just went in with my Charlotte Tilbury Face Palette in Beauty Glow. On my lashes, I have two products. I found with my Chanel La Volume, I can get much less transfer with that mascara if I go in with, I have a sample size of their Nourishing Base, which is just a clear base for eyelashes. On my brow, I actually have glycerin soap and my Anastasia Beverly Hills potted brow product, which um, I will cover in my March favorites. Marc Jacobs eyeliner in Earthquake. On my lips, I have my go-to Lux lipstick. This is the Coco Rouge Chanel lipstick in the shade 402 Adrienne. And I will be in, it is about 1130. I'll be back in about three hours and again in five or six hours just to check in on how my foundations are wearing. I will do a slow pan. So I'll we'll check back with you in just a few hours. Checking in with you very quickly to just review any observations if there if I'm seeing anything after about five hours of wear. And I was outside for a little bit. Also, I spent some time out in the front yard with Fergus. Uh, he likes to he likes to lay on the grass out there and hang out. It's a warm day. I am not seeing any unusual or noticeable difference between the two formulas, with the exception perhaps of how it is wearing at the wing of my nose. And it seems to be wearing better on the La Mer side than it is on the Estee Lauder side. What will tell us for sure is my next check-in, which will be after I spend some time running on the treadmill. Um, it's a beautiful day. I feel a little guilty running on the treadmill. I should be outside, but it is, but currently the pollen in North Carolina is at toxic levels, so I just don't want to do myself in or end up with a, a major, um, major problem with my sinuses or with asthma. So I'm gonna hang out and do that indoors. Mm -hmm. I know, boring. So I will check in with you again after that run. This is my final check-in for the evening. It is about seven o'clock in the evening. This foundation, both foundations have been on since 11 a.m., roughly eight hours. Well, I guess I could check in one more time after dinner. This is after a treadmill run and honestly, the La Mer side on the bridge of my nose, which is the place that is showing the most breakdown of the foundation, is holding up better than the Estee Lauder Double Wear. Now, everything else today looks virtually identical. It's slightly possible that my chin is wearing off and breaking up more on the Estee Lauder side as well, but we'll have to do the switch tomorrow to be able to determine that definitively. Um, the other thing that I tried that is different from my usual routine is a glycerin soap on a spoolie to set my brows before I go in with my Anastasia Beverly Hills brow pomade. 
and I am I could not be more thrilled with the hold and the bushy overall effect that I've been able to achieve after watching Penn Smith's tutorial on that technique. So I will link her video below and I will go back to the kitchen and finish putting together dinner. Tonight I'm throwing together an open face taco with um, real authentic corn tortillas and a fresh avocado and some of this pulled pork which is simmering away on the stove. So this channel does have a slight culinary track that you may or may not enjoy. I haven't quite determined how I am going to handle my myriad interests and hobbies on this channel, but I will throw a poll up in the cards and survey your opinion on whether that kind of cross hobby content annoys you or um, if perhaps you don't mind. So keep an eye out for that. Please do give me your feedback either up in the poll or in the comment section below. Welcome back to day two of my half day foundation comparison. Today on the right hand side of my face I will be putting more of my sample size La Mer Fluid Foundation and on the left hand side I will go in with the Estee Lauder Double Wear. Same application methods. The only things on my face are moisturizer and sunscreen. This is the Estee Lauder in Ecru. I'm just noticing some dog hair on my face. I was rubbing up against my dog. especially careful around my nose to press any press with the sponge to not just meld the foundation with my skin but to pick up any excess product that will deposit in fine lines or wear unevenly okay as you can see I still have a bit of red coming through on my cheeks so I'm going to build up just a little bit on my cheek area I'm not a huge fan of full coverage foundations, but I do work long hours. I leave the house about 6 a.m. and don't return until I'm not back home until about 4.30, 5 o'clock. So that's a long day for a foundation to have to last on combination skin. Okay, that is the Estee Lauder applied with my real beauty blender and i have a uh, just a generic sponge so on this i will just go in with my finger since i'm getting truly the dregs of my little sample pack and i will dot it on and immediately i notice that kind of port wine smell and I wonder if they don't add something along those lines. As a painter, there are all kinds of urban legends kicking around about, um, well, I suppose they're not really urban legends. Um, Pietro Anagoni in his egg tempura recipe purportedly used red wine in his formula. And this is such an unmistakable aroma. Very, very similar finishes on the skin. I have quite a bit more. I probably have three days left of the La Mer, which is interesting. It's possible that the La Mer side is more blurring on my pores and other texture. 
but I'll have to see if that observation holds up over time. It is just about 1130. I am going to put on the rest of my face and come back checking with you. I must have some dryness around my nose from my retin-A because I am not liking how that is doing strange things on this side with the dry patch next to my nose. Back with everything on, wearing everything that I wore yesterday with one exception. I put a little bit of the powdered highlighter on from the Charlotte Tilbury Glow Face Palette. That is the only difference in the products I'm wearing today compared to yesterday. I do want to talk about the ingredients, but first I will get real close so you can see some of the wear concerns again under around my nose area for both foundations. And I will let I will get real close and check the wear on my nose where the glasses hit. What I noticed in the mirror, of course, is around my nose on both sides. The foundation is beginning to break up or is wearing away as I have to wipe my nose. Um, it is just about April. We are in heightening allergy season in North Carolina, so that is not unexpected. Okay, just a quick review of the top five ingredients in both foundations. The active sunscreen in the Estee Lauder is just a physical sunscreen, titanium dioxide 1.9% and the La Mer has that physical sunblock titanium dioxide plus a chemical sunblock oxynoxate 7.5%. Now that ingredient is somewhat concerning. According to the Derm Review online, that ingredient has been shown to increase the development of estrogen in cells and it has been shown to also impact thyroid function. Now, neither of those things is an immediate concern to me and I do not seem to have any hypersensitivity to this particular chemical sunscreen. So that lessens the concern a little bit. Okay, other top five ingredients look very similar in both foundations. The first ingredient listed for both is water. Second ingredient listed for both is cyclopentasiloxane which is a, an emollient, a skin conditioner. The third ingredient for the La Mer is isodotacane, which is a spreading agent. It is not absorbed by the skin, according to Derm, the Derm Review. Uh, the next ingredient both foundations share, dimethicone, it's an emulsifier. Uh, the next ingredient is also, the next two ingredients are also shared by both foundations. Phenyl trimethicone and butylene glycol. And the phenyl trimethicone is an anti-foaming agent, a skin conditioner, an emollient, and the butylene Glycol is, is common in skincare products. So not a huge variation in the top five ingredients for these two products. All right, I will check back in with you after a few more hours. It is windy out, so I'm not sure how the sound quality is going to be. I will keep this short and sweet. We are doing our afternoon walk at the lake and I wanted to check in and I wanted to record an outdoor light check-in. 
here at the lake. It's about four o'clock. Come on. Once again, day two, I uh, didn't go quite, I didn't go quite as long on the tre treadmill. Haven't been feeling well physically because of the high pollen count. I'm sure you noticed me sniffling away on camera. Um, probably find that as annoying as I do. I apologize for that. But I did want to check in and give you a final update on the wear of the La Mer, which today is on this side, and the Essay Lauder on my left side. Uh, I will get up close. The Essay Lauder had that little problem with the dry patch at the wing of my nose ever since I applied it. Other than that, I feel I do have a magnifying mirror down here. I feel that both foundations wore remarkably well. They have very similar characteristics. They, I would have to say that the Estee Lauder side, and keep in mind that I don't have any kind of primer down, I just have moisturizer and sunscreen, but the Estee Lauder side shows more texture by way of my pores in my cheek area. The La Mer is much more um, blurring of a finish. And the wear seems to be completely contradictory because while this La Mer is holding up better on the bridge of my nose where the glasses hit, it does show more fading around my nostril. Now, again, because of seasonal allergies, I was wiping my nose all afternoon with a tissue and that probably is what has caused this to wear down so much. Um, and then on the bridge of my nose, the Essay Lauder not only has worn away, but it, it feels tacky to the touch. Day two, I have now had the both foundations on for six hours, and I feel that they could go longer. At this time of the day, I would probably powder, but my day is essentially over. It is just about dinner time. I'm just going to change out of my sweaty clothes, collect my thoughts, and I'll be back with, um, with some of those final thoughts. Time for some final thoughts. I suppose my essential question is this. Is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation a comparable dupe for the experience of the La Mer Fluid Foundation? And I feel that Ultimately, that answer has to be yes. Now, there are some characteristics that the La Mer has that the Essay Lauder lacks. However, I feel that those characteristics are fairly superficial. It doesn't matter to me truly what a foundation smells like. For, mo for many of us with sensitive skin, any kind of fragrance in a skincare product can create problems and flare-ups and whatnot. So I'm willing to let go of that smell. I have a fairly extensive collection of Eau de Parfum and I, whenever I want to smell good, I can dip into any of those. The other thing that the Estee Lauder Double Wear has in its favor is it does not contain any chemical sunscreens. The ingredient can be problematic. So in both of those instances, the Estee Lauder comes out squarely on top in terms of skin benefits or avoiding skin contaminants. For 
overall wear, the La Mer has a slight edge in terms of truly bonding to the skin. Now, I feel that there are enough products that I can use to touch up if I need to touch up my foundation that that is not a deal breaker for me. In fact, I wear glasses and I expect some wear on the bridge of my nose. Do I wish I didn't have to deal with that? Of course. But do I ever take my glasses off during the day? No, not if I want to see what I'm doing. So overall, it was a wonderful experience. I'm glad I did it. I did see slightly different things in the daily analysis of these two foundations, but ultimately I feel that I can comfortably go forward with certitude that if I want a long wearing foundation, the Estee Lauder Double Wear is right for me. And it saves me considerable amount of money over something like the La Mer. So thank you for joining me. Please do leave a comment in the comment section if you have another foundation that you like to compare to the La Mer, or if you have any other observations that you've made in your assessment of these products. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. Have a lovely evening, have a lovely week, and I hope to see you back next time. Ciao.